tell you about the next half hour, except that it has been reported as true by those to whom it happened. It has been investigated, and no one, as yet, has been able to explain it or disprove it. The year is 1939. It's a Friday afternoon in September. And all over Germany, on roads like this, young people with riders are hurrying for the open fields. The air is perfect. Under these conditions, a man could stay aloft for hours, alone, peaceful, soaring from one air current to the other. But the air, like the sea, has cross currents, which can unexpectedly take a man off his planned course plunge him into the unknown. Hey, Peter, stop the car! What's the matter? This rope is coming loose. Oh, no! Well, don't take all day. What's the matter with you? Nothing. But a Pickle face. Everybody beats you black and blue ten times a week. <laughs> Just let him try. And there'd be no books in the house but Nietzsche and Goebbels and no music but Wagner. Da -thum, da -thum, da -da -thum. <laughs> Is there any particular reason why you ridicule everything German? Oh, oh. Peter. <laughs> you better watch out, Hans. They'll report you to the SS and then off with your head. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Not with your beautiful head. Helga. Peter, what's the matter with you? Have you lost your sense of humor? I don't find it funny. It's not right. An engaged girl acting like a... Like a what? Like a what, Peter? We interrupt this program to announce that in one hour the Ministry of Information will issue an extraordinary proclamation. The program of operetta music has been cancelled for music of national unity. What does that mean? What do you suppose it means? Do you think we'll let those Polish bandits cross our frontiers forever without us doing something about it? That's not it at all. They're going to announce that Hansom Hans Fielder, the world's greatest glider pilot, has just set a new altitude record of 20,000 feet, bringing fame and glory not only to the lady for whom his glider is named, but also to the club he honors with his presence. <laughs> what an honor. First, you're a mile too tall to even fly our glider. Second, not a penny's worth of your dues if you paid in eight weeks. Whatever will. And third, I vote we kick you out. Oh, Theo. <laughs> Come on, let's try to get some decent music. Try to get tired. Leave it where it is. Peter, we're going to draw it to see who goes first. This is more important. Draw. Oh, come on. Look, don't rush me. Don't rush me. Two. Four. Three. One. If you aren't the <laughs> luckiest fellow in the whole world. I'm telling you, you're marrying the wrong man. I'm going to fly faster and higher and longer than anyone else in the world. Put me down, crazy man. Oh, dismal music. It's German. Well, can you dance to it? <laughs> He's giving me one of those looks again. This beer had better be cold, otherwise... Ah, it's icy. There's the bottle opener. I left it in the glove compartment. Well, go get it. Oh, yes, my lord and master. Helga. 
I'm getting sick of this, Helga. Sick of what? You're making a fool out of me, Helga. How? Before he came, everything was perfect. I was so proud. Everybody used to say, Peter certainly chose a beauty. How did he do it? I was so happy. Now everything is different. I mean it, Helga. I don't want my wife acting I'm like... I'm not your wife yet. Oh, Peter, you, you may hope this, but you really are. Can't you see how embarrassing it is for me, seeing you and him... Seeing me and him what? Did you stop acting as if I was committing some sort of sin? It's not your fault. What's not my fault? Being happy, is that some sort of crime against your precious Hitler? And I'm sorry. Hurry with the bottle opener. It's coming right away. Helga, please, I'm sorry. Don't eat so fast. Oh, so much. I want to get through and get up there. And once I do, I may never come down. Mm -hmm. All right, with your appetite, you'll come down. With these winds, you'd better be careful, Hans. If you don't use plenty of rudder on your takeoff, you could hit the mountains and fall into those trees. And then, goodbye, Hans. <laughs> goodbye, Glider, which is much sadder. <laughs> the Ministry of Information issues the following statement. Soldiers of the Third Reich crossed the Polish border at 9.22 a.m. today to end the provocations of the Polish authorities. All citizens will remain calm. All military personnel on leave will return to their units at once. Tonight at 8 p.m., the Führer will speak to the German people from the Polish front. The only one who stands? Peter, sit down. It's so strange. Is it such a surprise? The world is in for a lot of surprises. Just can't believe it. Next week he'll come and there'll be... There'll be no picnic to fix. No one honking their horn for me to hurry. No silly men yelling at me, you never cook enough chicken. Never again. How long do you think it'll take us to teach those Poles a lesson? A month from now, it'll be history. That would be nice. A month from now to meet here. A reunion to celebrate the end of the war. That's not such a bad idea. What? A reunion. And Helga won't be so sad. And we'd have something to look forward to. How about the first Sunday after the war ends? All of us back together again, here. That's childish. It's not childish. You must all promise, now. I promise, Helga. Oh, thank you, Hans. Come on, you two. I also promise. Do I get a kiss? Of course. I'd better get back. Me too. Peter, could you drop me off at the bus station? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's the hurry? A radio. It says it all. Well, are you so anxious to get to Poland? What about my flight? Forget it. Look, it's the last time. I won the drawing. Hans, nobody feels like it. Well, I feel like it. I think Hans is right. But it'll have to be a short flight this time, Hans. No world record. We really have to get back. An hour. One little hour. One of your hours can go on for days. I mean it. Hans, I, I wish you wouldn't. He won the drawing. Besides, the glider is all assembled. It'll take Helga a little while to get everything packed up. Come on. Have a good flight. But remember, one hour. One hour. I'm sorry about that. It didn't mean a thing. 
That safety belt's almost worn out. I don't know why it happened. Maybe it's the war. Maybe because we're finally in it. Now, remember about the takeoff. If you don't use any of rudder, work your flaps just right. You'll smash into that mountain and fall into those trees. And it's true, we'll probably never find you. I'll be careful. Will you? He could fly that bird in his sleep. He's not going to make it over that mountain. He must be asleep. Oh, Peter, look, you were right. He's flying it beautifully. He's up there floating on the thermos. He could stay up there for hours the way the air current is. He promised just one hour. Once he gets there, he forgets what he promises. It's happened before, Helga. You remember the Sunday he went up just once around the meadow and down? And that's the last we heard of him for five hours. I know. It's different. Something's happened. I can feel it. What has happened is that Hans is making his last flight a good one. Now, you go back with Theo in the car. I'll wait here until he shows up. I couldn't sleep if I didn't think he was all right. Peter, that's, that's very sweet of you. Just don't offer to stay here with me until he does show up, or I'll be jealous all over again. And another thing, if he ever kisses you like that again, I'll punch him right in his nose, and I'll tell him so. I'm sorry about the kiss. I'm sorry, too. Now, you go back to town with Theo. Hans and I will get a ride back. You'll call me the minute you find me. No matter how late, yes. Thank you, Peter. You're very thoughtful. Peter, we'll meet again. At the reunion. At the reunion, yes. I didn't want to say it in front of her, but he probably fell into the trees. That's what I think. 
Still, when it gets light, I want to look again. In the years that followed, the young people of the Glider Club were swallowed into the vast Nazi war effort. Richard bombed Rotterdam. France helped turn the North Sea into a graveyard of Allied ships. Theo marched triumphantly through Paris. Peter and Helga were part of the enormously efficient industrial machine that ground out weapons of terror around the clock. Glory, victory, Deutschland über alles. And then something went wrong. It went wrong in the deserts of North Africa, in the snow of Stalingrad. In the sky over Berlin. And finally, the insane dream was over. The ashes cooled amid the ruins. The commandant of the French zone of occupation announces the following edict to take effect at once. One, all churches are to be reopened today. And it is suggested that sermons reflect on the horrors of Nazism. And what are the rules concerning us scratching for fleas, huh? Or biting our, our fingernails, or, 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 or how many times our heart is allowed to beat? in the morning. The papers was in walking distance. What are you talking about? I knew you'd forgotten. Forgot what? The reunion. What reunion? We promised, Peter. The first Sunday after the war ends. You know, once and for all, I should have you committed. It's impossible to believe that such stupidity exists. The Glider Club, a reunion. Listen to that. Do you think you're still the little girl that used to fix the picnics? Look in the mirror. You don't have to come. No one will be there. Then I'll come home. I know why you're going. You think your Hans will suddenly appear and whirl you about and, and kiss you in the mouth, huh? Well, he won't. I mean, try to be reasonable, Helga. After all these years, no trace. He must be dead. I know he's dead. Then why go? Why waste the bus fare? Some of the others may come if they're alive. And wasting all that food. There's very little food. I'll bring it home if they don't come. Please, Helga, it's so childish. I said you don't have to go. And what will the others think? I, I mean, I mean, if any of them are so foolish as to be there, is there some reason why Peter's not here? Is there some reason? I'll tell them you're not feeling well. Helga, I forbid it. It doesn't matter what you forbid. Helga! Are you satisfied? You spent all that money on the bus for nothing. Didn't I tell you it was stupid? What foolishness. Helga, let's go home. A man gave me a ride out here. He had to go to a farm up the road to buy some eggs. On the way back, he'll take us to town. Well, come on. Theo! Oh, Theo! Theo! Oh, 
I was... I felt very foolish coming here today. Yes, yes, so did Peter. Uh, but I knew uh, somebody would remember besides me. Oh, you two stayed together. Yes, we're together. After she lost hands, she decided to settle on me after all. Was he ever found? No. I had Richard got killed at Stalingrad. At least he died in glory. Not a day at a time. Glory? Is there really such a word? What about fun? He forgot about such foolishness as reunion. I brought some sausage and, and, and some cheese. Were we really ever that young? Couldn't possibly have been. Theo, are you staying in town? No, I... I live at a hospital. Well, we'd like to see you again. We live at 112 Drakestrasse, apartment 12. Will you remember? Of course. I'll, I'll write before I come. Good. Peter was right. Sentimentality is stupid. So, we've had our little reunion. Oh, we're sad with each other and we don't know what to say. That's the man that drove me out. He said he'd honk. Come on. Well, Theo, what happened to us? What we let happen. Inside the jacket, beneath the helmet, behind the goggles, Helga found a skeleton. Hans kept his promise. Almost six years after his murder, he returned for the reunion. But how? What happened to the glider? Did it catch in the tall trees of the forest? And finally, after all this time, suddenly find itself lifted free by a, a gust of wind? Well, that's possible. But why did the glider Helga choose that year, that day, that place, that moment to make its return? And its return from where? In a moment, a word about next week. Next week, and every week, we'll be bringing you the personal records of the rarest kind of human experience, man's adventure in the world of the unknown, that mysterious psychic world beyond our five senses. This is your invitation to take with us that astonishing one step beyond.